Hi everyone. We're going to take a little bit of a different track this time. We're going to talk about frame scripts and how I can use movie clips inside of my of my Flash project and use ActionScript to control their behavior. I already have something started here, so let's take a look at what we have already. So right here I have a I have a movie clip that I imported in from Fireworks. I want to take this movie clip and I want to actually create a animation that's going to be encapsulated inside of a specific movie clip. What this means is the timeline of this object is not going to be on the main timeline. It's going to be inside of another movie clip. I'm going to give that movie clip a name and then I can control it from the main timeline using ActionScript. So right now I just have the simple object here. So I'm going to convert this into um, I'm going to I'm going to convert this into a movie clip, which actually was already done for me because I brought this in from Fireworks. If you double click into it, you'll be able to edit the specific object itself in isolation from the main timeline. So if I right click here, I can create my motion tween. And it's going to notify me that I need to convert this to an object and it will do that for me. And now I can start building my animation. I'm just going to have this go to the other side of the screen. So I'm going to move my playhead to the very end of the timeline to reposition where this is going to be and then click and drag this to the other side of the screen. There, so my timeline is now created and I have my animation built in. So let's go back to the first scene. What I want to do is I want to control the specific actions of this object. In order to do that, I need to do a instance name. And if you remember, everything that we do in ActionScript is based on the instance name. Right now I don't have a name and I'm going to give that right here in the properties panel. So I'm, going to, I'm going to call this star animation. Right, so now I have my object created, I have the animation finished, and I've uh, named the object in the, in the properties panel. So the next thing I need to do is actually play the animation. But if you remember, when I actually run the project, it's going to automatically play the animation for me. So I don't have to actually play it um, specifically. But it does run over and over and over again. So I do have to stop the animation when it's at the end. To do that, I need to do that on the timeline that the animation is on, which is inside the encapsulated timeline of my star animation object. So I'm going to go back inside of that. And I need to actually create a specific action called stop at the end of the timeline animation. So I'm going to create a new layer at the top. And I'm going to place a specific stop action at the end of the animation. So I'm going to insert a blank, uh, say insert a blank keyframe. And I'm going to add in stop. Now if I run the animation, you'll see that when I get to the end, it stops the animation. There are a couple other things that we can do here as well. I'm going to actually go back to I'm going to go back to scene one, and I'm going to show you a couple other commands that we'll expand on in a future video, but just to kind of get you started. First thing is called the go to and stop action. Go to and stop allows you to take the animation and go to a specific frame of the animation and stop playback. I would actually need to use the star animation instance name to access the timeline of that particular object. So I'm going to use this in my um, action script on my main timeline here. So I have star animation, and I'm going to say go to and stop. I then need to give it a specific frame number. The animation that I created actually goes from frame 1 to frame 24. So I'm going to use frame 10 just as, a, as an example. Go to and stop is an action script command which you have to put the value of our frame number inside a pair of parentheses. And again, always remember to put a semicolon at the end of your action script statements. So I'm going to save, I'm going to run, and you'll see that it immediately goes to frame 10. It doesn't actually play the animation because I've told it to stop. We're going to build on this a little bit more with more instances of how I can control my animation combined with using the mouse and the event handlers that we learned in the previous videos.